Hello all and welcome back. I hope you're all doing really well. Let's jump into this update today. So first things first, if we look at the crypto bubbles for the market cap overview, we can see that HBAR is down roughly 10% on the week, bleeding out in relation to the rest of the market as well. Engine as well is down 9% according that I've touched on in the past. Some decent potential for engine. Um, at these levels, I've said it before and I'll, I'll say it again, this is a great time to be sort of DCAing into positions those that hold over the long term will be the ones that come out on top um, especially if we see an absolute explosion in the h bar price being in early is what's going to make the difference there for you guys another big update is um to do with seeky on hedera so seeky is a um music and exclusive NF nft platform so multimedia multi-blockchain nft creation engine and marketplace wrapped in a social ecosystem that streams nft music live streams and posts equipping users with all the tools to connect and engage with each other and their favorite artist packed with cutting edge features so fast royalty payments really similar as well um, to how hashpack operates with their nft trade features with uh, perpetual royalties on transactions advanced statistics security gam gamification multi-chain nft engines and cryptocurrencies Naturally, of course, it being featured in one of my videos, it's of course partnered with the HBAR Foundation and Hedera in general, um, which is fantastic. They're obviously going through the different phases. Some updates on Twitter as well, um, with people coming out and saying effectively they're going to NFT their whole albums on the Seeky app via Hedera. So this enables artists to launch all of their music through the platform, NFT sections of the albums off, as well as their songs. Um, and receive royalties in real time, whereas opposed to traditional music streaming platforms like Apple Music and Spotify, um, they're aggregated towards, say, the end of the month or the period, and then they receive their payouts that way. Internalizing this through the blockchain or Hashgraph technology enables this to be really fast and scalable for these artists. So some big steps forward there for Hedera's ecosystem, again, um, in all different realms of the, of the institutional world from as I've said before, CBDCs and governments through to these music apps and then massive amounts of other technology being built on top of Hashgraph. Something else I wanted to touch on in this video as well is the notion that I've seen a lot of people talking about and it's some pre-existing FUD around Hedera that Hedera is not decentralized, that it is centralized. Um, point to an article over on Hedera's website. After reading this, you'll understand the basics of the Hashgraph consensus, the network services offered by Hedera, decentralized governing council structure and members, examples of third-party applications built on Hedera and Hedera's path to decentralization. Now, it's no new news that Hedera's creation effectively to begin with was centralized and they are making massive headways to becoming fully decentralized. One of the biggest things of them being releasing their patents as well as becoming open sourced. Massive videos on my channel previously covering those updates. Um, but all of that in tandem is then moving towards this decentralized future of where Hedera can basically run anything from permissionless nodes. So if we look at this article here, uh, Hedera Hashgraph explained, Hedera is a public distributed ledger and governing body built from the ground up to support new and existing applications running at web scale. This is something I've touched on before as well. It has been built from the ground up. It wasn't a project that was pushed out there immediately to jump on some bandwagon for DeFi, for example. A lot of other layer ones have taken that approach and they're now struggling with scalability, having to implement things like sharding just to keep up with TPS. This is not a problem on Hedera. It was built to be scalable to begin with. Developers use distributed ledger technologies to build computational trust directly into their applications. This allows individuals and businesses who might not know or trust each other to quickly and inexpensively collaborate. Public distributed ledgers allow for creating and exchanging value, proving identity, verifying and authenticating important data, and much more. Hedera is unique in that it achieves the same result as the most ubiquitous public blockchain such as Bitcoin or Ethereum, but in a way that is faster, fairer and more energy efficient, stable and secure. These advantages can be attributed to the underlying Hashgraph consensus algorithm and the global enterprise governing body which owns and operates Hedera today. And obviously recently, as I mentioned just a minute ago and in previous videos, this governing council effectively unanimously voted to open source the Hashgraph algorithm and enabling this onboarding of companies in real time, in a much faster real time way. Um, if we unpack Hedera Hashgraph and look at each component individually, 
Hashgraph Consensus, you've got the network services, the governing council, third party applications and their path to decentralization. So what we're talking about here is the argument would be that because it has a governing council that is not fully decentralized, all of these nodes are run by this governing council. Well, this governing council is elected. They only serve a short term. And not only that, they have to have consensus between them in order to run the network. If we take the classical approach of a non decent or, or sorry, of a decentralized network, intrinsically, they're not, they ca they're not always truly decentralized. You could end up with 10,000 individuals running one node each, or you could end up with two individuals running 5,000 nodes each. Because it's decentralized, you don't know who's running each node. It's fully anonymous. Um, this is also amplified when there is a form of competition or selection process for each individual round of consensus. For example, in a typical proof of work network like Bitcoin or Ethereum, the fastest nodes pretty much always win the influence over the network. What this means is even though the total node count may be high, 10,000 nodes instead of Hedera's 33, whoever can win that race can exert more influence over the network. This results in proof of work networks becoming centralized to regions with favorable conditions, for example, cheaper energy. Let's look at Bitcoin um, and I think it was Ethereum, but Kazakhstan when they had an energy crisis, half the network went down because that was where it was cheaper for them to run these nodes from. It took off the network. Centralized individuals with more means to compete, i.e. access to more capital for mining equipment, etc., and favorable energy deals will end up governing what happens and determines the network. So depending on how we define centralized versus decentralized across all of the aspects, Hedera could genuinely be considered the most de decentralized network since influence on consensus and the influence on governance is equally split between the council members. Each council member has exactly the same percentage of influence. Thus, there is literally no point of centralization in this instance. It's not possible. Not only that as well, we're looking at the path. Uh, we've seen it before, Hedera keeps talking about the path to decentralization. Obviously, we've got staking rewards that will be coming soon. There's another article on their, their website which talks about who can run a Hedera mainnet node. So initially, only council members will be able to run network nodes, but the plan is to expand the ability to host nodes over time, starting with other trusted organizations and partners. Eventually, anyone who can meet the basic requirements for bandwidth, CPU, and storage will be able to run these nodes. We expect to eventually have a huge diversity of nodes around the world run by ordinary people, some of whom might choose to remain anonymous. You can learn more about Hedera's path to decentralization by watching this webinar. So there's a great video, I'll link it in the description by Dr. Lehman Bard, who talks about this as well. But the fact of the matter is, is that Hedera is decentralized and probably one of the most decentralized networks that exists today. Just because it doesn't have 100,000 nodes being run by anonymous people does not mean it, is, it isn't decentralized. Very important distinction. Talking about price as well, so I've mentioned this a few times before, but if we look at the coin perspective and we look at the market cap of Hedera in perspective of other coins, the price appreciation is still absolutely phenomenal for Hedera. This is a dirtily undervalued project as it currently stands. If Hedera had Solana's market cap of 30.6 billion, for example, one Hedera would be worth $1.60, which is an upside of nearly 580%. Not only that, if we look at some other layer ones, for example, Avalanche, one H bar would be worth just over a dollar with an upside of 350%. I think people are in denial if they genuinely believe that Hedera will not match the market cap or take the positions of thing, projects like Avalanche and Solana who are already struggling with scalability. I've also published previous material which indicates how much faster HBAR is in relation to chains like Avalanche. The sky here and the possibilities for Hedera are completely endless. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this update. It was a bit longer than normal, but really sort of delving into why Hedera is decentralized and its future is still incredibly bright. Don't get scared by the, the, the market in the short term. Make sure you're playing the long-term game. Chisel.